ever feel like, you know, sometimes you got this kind of tug of war happening up in your head. Hmm, I know that feeling. Yeah, like one minute you're totally on top of things, thinking clearly, and the next you're like two seconds away from a total meltdown. Oh, absolutely. Well, that, my friend, is where Professor Steve Peters and his book, A Path Through the Jungle, comes in. You want to build some serious mental resilience, right? Okay. This book, it's like it gives you the instruction manual for your own mind. What I find so cool about Peter's approach is that it's not just, here's a coping mechanism, now good luck. Right. He actually starts by explaining how our minds work, and he does that with this idea of, get this, the three teams. The three teams. <laughs> okay, I'm intrigued. Who are these teams? All right, so picture this. You got the human. That's the logical one, the voice of reason, thinking long-term, all that good stuff. Makes sense. Then there's the chimp. Now, the chimp, that's your impulsive side, emotional, driven by instinct, wants what it wants when it wants it. Oh, I know that chimp well. Mine's always particularly loud when I'm scrolling through social media. Exactly. And too often, we let that chimp call the shots. Peters calls this the chimp paradox, right? We've got this incredible brain power, but then we go and make decisions based on fear or just wanting instant gratification. It's like when you know you should be eating healthy, but that chocolate cake is just calling your name. You're human saying salad, but the chimp's already at the dessert tray. You got it. But wait, there's more. There's a third team member. The computer. Okay, hold on. A human, a chimp, and now a computer. My mind's about to explode. Just stay with me. Think of the computer as this massive hard drive storing all your beliefs, your habits, those automatic responses you have. The thing is, most of this programming, it's happening subconsciously. We're on autopilot. Pretty much. We're often running on old software, outdated beliefs, maybe even some negative experiences from way back. So can we, like, update the software? That's exactly what Peter says. He calls these updates autopilots. We can actually choose the beliefs and behaviors we want and rewire our responses. Whoa, so we can actually reprogram our brains. It's kind of mind-blowing, right? And that's where things get really interesting. Peters gives you these practical exercises, helps you identify those limiting beliefs that are holding you back. He even gives them a name. Gremlins. Gremlins. Okay, now you're really speaking my language. <laughs> Tell me more about these gremlins. Oh, we're diving into gremlin territory next. They're sneakier than you think. Gremlins, huh? Okay, so not the cute furry kind that multiply when you feed them after midnight. Not quite, although these gremlins can be just as mischievous. So how do we know if we've got a gremlin situation happening? Well, think about those moments when, like, your emotions just go haywire. Oh, you mean like that feeling when you're about to give a big presentation? Exactly. Or when you're about to hit send on an important email and suddenly your inner critic starts going off the charts. Oh, yeah, like... This is going to be a disaster. Everyone's going to think you're a fraud. Like, where does that even come from? From your gremlin. They feed on self-doubt, those negative thoughts we have about ourselves. They sound exhausting. They really are. And the thing is, we often don't even question them. We just take their word for it, like they're some kind of authority. So how do we evict these gremlins? Do we, like, need a mental pest control service? Oh, I like that. But no, luckily, we have the power to do it ourselves. Okay. Tell me more. The first step is awareness. You gotta shine a light on those gremlins, call them out. Like, hold on a second. Who said I'm not good enough? Where's the evidence for that? So it's about challenging those negative thoughts, yeah. not just blindly accepting them. You got it. Don't give them so much power. Remember, gremlins thrive in the darkness. Once you expose them, they start to lose their grip. And then what? How do we replace those negative beliefs with something more? You know, helpful. That's where the autopilots come in. Right, the autopilots. Yeah. The software upgrade we talked about. Oh, exactly. So for every gremlin, you got to create a new positive program. Like, let's say your gremlin is all about, I'm not good enough. Oh, I know that gremlin. You could create an autopilot that says, I am capable. I am worthy. I'm enough. So it's about consciously choosing a different belief. Yeah. And then, like, repeating it until it sinks in. It's like creating a new groove in your brain, a new default setting. I love that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So we're basically retraining our brains to think differently. And Peters has all these cool techniques for doing that. Another one I love is the what's the plan autopilot. What's the plan? Okay, I'm listening. It's so simple, but it works wonders. So you're in a stressful situation, right? Instead of freaking out, you just ask yourself, what's the plan? So instead of letting your emotions take over, you're shifting to problem-solving mode. Exactly. You're engaging your human, that rational part of your brain. It's like telling your chimp, all right, settle down. We got this. I love that. 
because it really is about taking control. And, you know, speaking of control, Peters also talks about setting realistic expectations. Oh, yeah, that whole comparison game. It's like a recipe for unhappiness. It is. And he has this concept called drawing the line. It's about recognizing that, look, there will always be more to do, more to achieve. It's like that saying, there's always going to be a bigger fish. Right. But drawing the line is about deciding what success means to you on your own terms. It's about finding contentment right here, right now, not waiting for some external validation or achievement. Now you're getting it. And that, my friend, is a huge step towards building true resilience. You know, it's so easy to get caught up in that, right? always chasing after the next big thing, thinking that's going to be the key to happiness. It's such a trap. And Peter's, he really nails it with this concept of drawing the line. Like, mm -hmm. we get to decide what success looks like for us. It's about finding that inner peace, that sense of enough, instead of constantly looking outward for validation. A hundred percent. And, you know, that's where self-esteem comes in. And I don't mean the superficial kind of self-esteem. Right, not just like, look at me, I'm amazing. Exactly. It's about recognizing your inherent worth just as a human being. Because once you truly believe that, well, you're not so reliant on external stuff to make you feel good. It's like that saying, you have to love yourself first. There you go. Yeah. But it's easier said than done, right? Especially these days when we're constantly bombarded with messages telling us we're not enough, we don't have enough. Oh, absolutely. Social media can be a real minefield for self-esteem. It's like everyone else is living their best life and you're stuck at home with a bag of chips and a Netflix subscription. I've been there. It's so easy to get caught up in that comparison game. But the thing is, we're all fighting our own battles, right? We don't know what's really going on behind those perfectly curated Instagram feeds. That's a good reminder. We're all just human, after all. And speaking of humans, we've been talking a lot about, like, managing our own minds. But what about other people? Like, not everyone in our lives is going to be as, shall we say emotionally evolved as us you're telling me <laughs> but here's the thing just like we have our own chimp running around so does everyone else oh no more chimps to deal with i know right but once you understand this it can make those challenging relationships a little easier to navigate okay so how do we do that how do we deal with other people's chimps, especially when they're, you know, acting up? Well, first, try to remember it's not always personal. Their chimps probably just having a moment. Easier said than done, sometimes. Yeah. But I get it. And look, sometimes you got to set boundaries. Oh, boundaries, yes. It's a big one. You can't control how other people act, but you can control how you respond. And sometimes the healthiest thing you can do is create some distance. Yeah, I've learned that the hard way. Sometimes you just got to walk away for your own sanity. Exactly. And that's not selfish, it's self-care. Totally. Now, on a more positive note, Peters also talks about the importance of having a strong support system, what he calls your troop. Oh, the troop. I love that concept. It's like your inner circle, those people who lift you up, inspire you. Your rider dies. Exactly. And surrounding yourself with those kinds of people, well, that's huge for building resilience. It's like having a team of cheerleaders in your corner reminding you that you're awesome even when you don't feel like it. And when your chimp starts acting up, they can be there to, like, gently nudge you back on track. This has been so eye-opening. <laughs> Seriously, this book is a game changer. It really is packed with so much wisdom. I think if there's one thing I hope listeners take away from this, it's that building resilience, it's not a one and done deal, it's a journey. It's about being curious about your own mind, understanding how it works, and giving yourself grace along the way. A hundred percent. And remember, you've got this. You heard it here, folks. You've got this. A huge thank you to our amazing expert for joining us today and for sharing so much incredible insight. Thanks for having me. This was fun. And to all our listeners, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time for another deep dive.